Hi, this is Brian Grubb of Grubb Woodworks. I'm going to be showing how I turn a wooden mushroom. Now I'll be shaping the stem portion of the mushroom and then working back on the cap. At this point in the video, I've sped it up due to the fact that if I didn't, this video would take an hour and a half to watch. Because it takes an hour and a half to actually make a mushroom. Right now I'm using a roughing gouge to take off a lot of material quickly. Um, this is actually the stem portion of the mushroom. I will explain further as I go along. At this point in the video, I've sped it up even further. I've switched to using a spindle gouge. Um, I also was having trouble with my chuck. I had to keep stopping it and retightening the chuck. But I'm just making detailed passes at this point. Now I'm refining the uh, stem shape. Beautiful curls off the wave right now. I'm very happy with how the wood's cutting. The wood that I'm turning here is actually a type of willow. It grows in Texas. Uh, this was harvested six months ago and allowed to slightly dry. Normally this would go a lot smoother. As you can see I've added tape to the end of the mushroom now. This is so that as I continue to remove material the stem is held in a straight manner instead of flopping around where it could break. At this point I had to take steady deliberate passes uh, due to as the stem gets thinner the wood wants to move more because you're releasing more pressures. Um, normally with a very wet piece of wood, a freshly harvested piece of wood, I wouldn't have the issues I was having with this piece. Now for a slightly different angle while I'm shaping the gills of the mushroom. On this particular mushroom while I was shaping the gills, uh, I was actually working from the underside to give myself the shape that the top of the mushroom cap would later have. Um, you'll see in a minute how I actually uh, make sure that I get a uniform thickness throughout the mushroom cap. That's the uh, underside of a mushroom with a gill structure. Now to shape the top of the cap and then I can do a little bit of sanding and then it'll be off to steam bending. Great care has to be taken at this point because as the cap gets thinner it wants to warp and twist with just the movement of the lathe. The centripetal force on the rim will actually stretch the shape of the cap. So you have to take very steady, deliberate passes with a light hand. Otherwise you can gouge into the wood and shatter the cap and then it's a complete lost piece. I find that sharpening often while turning will help with the making of clean passes and eliminate the possibility for tear out. Now I like to use light to find out if I've gotten the, uh, the mushroom cap thin enough for nature to give me the predictable bending and warping and twisting that I expect you know, a natural mushroom to look like. So now I have two high intensity LED lights behind the wood which will allow the wood to glow as the light transmits through it. 
In the past, I actually used regular incandescent bulbs to do this. Unfortunately, the heat from the bulb would be drying out the blank as I'm turning. But as you can see here, as I make the piece thinner, you can actually see the light transmitting through the wood. It's kind of an eerie effect. That pretty much does it for the shape. Now I'm going to uh, go ahead and do a little bit of sanding on here so that when I go do my final sanding, it'll be easier on me. Sanding's not very entertaining to watch, so I think I'll come back to the video after I'm done with this and I'm ready to soak the wood before the steaming. Initial sanding is complete. Now it's time for me to separate this from the lathe. This is the part where I'm always afraid that I'm going to ruin roughly an hour's worth of work. I'm always very concerned at this point using this detailed spindle gouge that I could accidentally gouge the cap of the mushroom or cut too quick, too deeply, too quickly, and causing the fibers to become too thin that I actually hold it on to the sailing off. At this point, I use a utility knife to cut the mushroom free. And it's free. Alright, we're free from the lathe now. And as I mentioned, this is seasoned uh, green wood. It's been protected with anchor seal on the wooden blank prior to um, letting it sit for approximately six months. So I need to make sure that it is wet wet before I go ahead and do the steaming. So this is where our beautiful vat of wonderful water comes in handy. We just dump it in there and I'll let it sit for hmm, probably the next 5-10 minutes. Let it soak up a good amount of that water. And then uh, we'll wrap it and we'll put it in the microwave and do some microwave steam bending. See you there in just a minute. Alright, so we're almost at the end of the three minutes that it takes to microwave. There you go. That's three minutes in the microwave with a fully soaked piece of wood wrapped in very wet paper towel. And now what I will be doing is unwrapping it very quickly before my gloves get too wet. Because this is excruciatingly hot. Believe it or not, it is steamed wood becomes pliable once it's been steamed something about the lignum becomes elastic and you can do things like easily bend it as long as you manipulate the grain in a direction where it wants to go and then you can shape the cap all you have to do is hold it until it cools and it will hold whatever shape you have pushed it to. The trick is to be very careful and not break your very carefully crafted mushroom at this point. I had a nice little split in this one, so I'm trying to bend the cap in such a way that it will accentuate the split and make it a happy little design element. As soon as I feel that it will hold, I will take it and it goes directly into a toaster oven for a little bit of four man version of kiln drying. Put it into the little toaster oven here in my lathe studio. Toaster oven has been sacrificed specifically for the point of drying wood. I'll now let it sit in there for approximately 40 minutes, and then I'll be able to bring it out, finish sand it. Hi, hey, welcome back. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this as much as I enjoyed making it. Here's the finished project. Have a good day.